So you seem to have a unique position both with the audience. You also have it with actors and directors because I notice that you direct a lot of your plays. Yeah. I know no other director who directs a lot of their scripts. Mm -hmm. Why? I, uh, well, it was just to get rid of the middleman, really. On the to get trip. rid of the middleman. We'll say that all to the directing <laughs> students at all the, the theater schools. We're, we you're the middleman. We'd like to get rid of you, please. Well, I wanted to have direct access to the actor, that's all. And I, went, and I wasn't asking him to do anything other than this material, right? I would never do this to anyone else. I'd say, because I'm not precious with it. I'd say, why are you treating it with kid gloves? It's pretty kind of muscular and interesting. You could just dig in there. Uh, and I just wanted to talk to him because I felt that I was closer to what was going on. And uh, I always wanted to just do it. I didn't want to interpret it. I just wanted to do it. And it was, uh, there was a lot of freedom there. And I, and I just didn't want to be in, sitting in the room protecting the script, you know, whatever that nonsense. Or having it interpreted by someone in the middle, by a director. Yeah, or saying, you know, this is, more, I did want more emphasis put on it. You know, stand at center stage and deliver it. It's like it's important. And I go, you know. So, in fact, that is a relationship between Shakespeare and his actors. Just whatever. I mean, it is a direct line. Yeah. I mean, you could also say orchestrally, right? Because there were no conductors yeah. before the 19th century. So it was a direct line from the composer, who either sat as the first violinist, to the musicians. So you are restoring that direct relationship before the maestro. Appeared. And no, and I'm not protecting anything. It's just the game. There it is. I mean, well, what do you mean not protecting? Well, I'm not there to say. I mean, uh, maybe just an example, like working with lovely Peter Donaldson, you know, just before he left us, and uh, on the. A play, and I, he had all these long speeches. I was forever trying to just make him better, just by cutting. He said, "George, it's me. It's me. I can make this work." I said, "You don't need to. <laughs> you know, I'm, my, I, I, I'm following your rhythms here. I can do the same stuff." Right. And the character is still talking to me through you now, and I'm just doing this. And he said, "Well, you seem to be cutting stuff." I said, "Well, I just think what you're doing don't need as much. It's okay." And just going like, no, I don't want you to change anything. I said, I'll change anything you want. I'll change it all. Don't worry about it. It'll be good. So it's out of going like, this is not something you, of course, the guy from Stratford and you don't mess yeah, with yeah. the text. And I'm right. going, ah, mess with it. <laughs> you know? But he said, well, if I say this, and I said, I don't care what order you say them in. It doesn't mean anything to me. It's just, I just want it to be alive. So how do you rehearse with actors? Just that. I would just now go... I say, here's the thing I say, it's pretty important in this work, it's because it's like jazz, and because that you don't let it get too extended. So you keep it fairly tight. I mean, you're listening cue to cue, you're listening and respond, that old right. miser thing. So that's the only thing. It's so that you're not fabricating it on your own. You're actually feeding off someone. You're not having to do, and take it in, work it, you're just, and then through that, through that action, I think, is how you, the character, evolves and grows and how the thing grows, not on your own, constantly keeping, that's what I mean, but it's a jazz band, they're rehearsing, keep their instrument there. So all I'm saying is the only danger in this is if, and then I don't want to do the thing that directors do, they just let it get really, really excited, then they do the artificial tightening at the end. Okay, then let's have an Italian tighten it up. I go, well, why don't you just rehearse it like that? Not like an Italian, but rehearse like it's written. Sort of like hear the music and play it, and then if it gets in your way, I can make some adjustments. So that's all I basically say. Keep it alive. Keep it out of your head, keep listening, and just let it be. Just, just live. And so, but don't let it get all kind of... So they are, I mean, this totally makes sense to what I see and what I love in your show. They're all gut-driven shows, but the comedy's coming out of here. And you say keep it out of your head, but the kind of, the mental, uh, the mental games that go on, in fact, is what makes me laugh. Yeah. But so you say keep it out of your head, but... Let's respond. You are, the, I guess it goes back to the, you are, you, this is the real thing here, you are actually the guy. So you don't have to pretend, you, know, you don't have to do any work. You don't have to act. You just have to I be just, the guy. I just say the dialogue, it's with passionately, force, it's what, passionate, any way you want. Pick up the cue, any way I want, and you'll we'll get there. You're damn right you will. And you'll what get are they doing in acting school, George? What is that three years of acting school? What's that about? I don't know. Well, often it's, <laughs> when they go to my stuff, they do that. But they think it's just with that. I, and again, I don't presume to tell them how to do anything else, because that would be just rude. So I'm just dealing with this stuff, because I know the rhythm it kind of, it, as it comes out of me. And, I, and I've only seen the actors only get into trouble when they're operating on their own. So they're separated from the herd by taking it inside them. And I see. I'm very saying to a young actor, so what this is, what's this long, these long pauses that you're taking? What is going on here? So I'm, I'm thinking about stuff, and I say, well, tell me what you're thinking, I'll write it down, and you can say it, <laughs> you know? Because I want it all out there, I just want it exposed. I don't want them wondering what you're thinking, I just want them to hear, this is, this, this is the arena in which we're all assholes, we all humiliate ourselves together, and so just say it. 
I said, well, uh, I'm just, just say it. What do you want to say? And well, if it's, well, just write it down. I'm sure it's good. <laughs> you know? So you're, in tar and I hesitate to say this, but I will say it's partly true. You are totally word-based theater. Mm, pretty much, I think. Well, although because physical, that's what through yeah, it's, feeling comes through, emotion comes through, fear comes through, absurdity comes through, comes through words. And come, and and the body is is the deliverer, not just the head, the body, right? So when actors are freed up, the body is freed up. You know, I some, read somewhere that when the, it's the body that teaches, that tricks the mind into thinking that they're. I said, well, I have found myself interested in directing, so I'm not talking about the words so much, but talking about are you moving towards this person. Are you moving away from this person? Are you standing or sitting and stuff? I, that's what the body's doing. That's how I actually understand it. How it's how it's being translated. It's what you're doing, not what you're thinking. And I I was surprised by that myself. That as a writer, that's how I was explaining things to actors. They asked me for this. I go, well, I think you're sitting. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I think you're moving, or I think you're banging his head against the wall. But that's all I. I couldn't, in, I couldn't intellectualize it before, I, couldn't, I can't to this day explain what it is. Right. But I can explain the kind of what's going on, you're scared, or right. you're trying to find out what's going on, trying, you, know, you really want to know, so uh, that means you're leaning in or you're whatever. So that's, that's surprised me too. But again, so the early plays then that were directed by the Martin Kinches and the Ken Gasses, mm -hmm. how did you work with that then? Well, I learned. You know, learn from a directing from what Martin Kinchin. Or I would watch them do stuff, and I thought I would just often more and more. I think I would not do it like that, and not that was what they were doing was wrong. I I think there's a shorter route to that. I think right. what I think the problem is they're not. They think the problem is to explain what the actors are doing uh, in very intellectual terms. I and I would say to myself earlier, I said this: they just need a verb. <coughs> they need a verb, or they need an emotion. That's all they need. They don't need much more than that. So this is a bit like Robert Lepage as well, and you guys are coming from mm -hmm. way totally different ends of the yeah, spectrum, yeah. but both of you have removed the middle person, the director, the maestro, so to speak, and are mainlining it. Mm -hmm. It's like Robert mainlines his plots that he puts together, and you mainline your characters, and you don't want anything in between. And I want it simple, I don't want it, I don't want that, there's no vision, you know what I mean? There's no kind of like right way to do this. There's just, you know, keep it alive in the room, and then present it to the audience. Keep it alive in the room. Grow through keeping it alive in the room. You know? And you seem to lean towards writing for confined spaces. Mm. Rather than your plays, I, I, I remember, your play don't reach to the top of Mount Everest and suddenly a scene in the, in the science department. Well, I don't have that kind of uh, ability, you know, first of all, as a director. Although the group, in this group of new plays, they move around a little bit, but not in that far. They'll just, you know, although there is something about writing in, like, in the motel room. So liberating. People thought it was confining, but for me it was liberating because they said, well, why? So well, because someone opens the door and anyone can come in. And once they're in, they can't hide. Because it's a motel, not a room. Yeah. Anyone could come in. Literally, think about it. Under any circumstances, you know, you could find the circumstances. You name a person, name a profession. Think about it long enough, and you could put them in the motel, right. and very and, and have them related in different ways. Now, the only place they can go, and this was interesting in doing them, is to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, and even then they had to go do something in the bathroom. There's a reason to go and a reason to come out, but they couldn't go anywhere else. And I found that uh, both in the writing and in the doing of them, the directing of them, really, really right. liberating. Just come. Well, where are we going to hide? Right. We cannot hide. We might as well try and tell the truth in here. <laughs> You know, so just like look at each other and pay attention to each other, and uh, right. if because if you're not, if you're looking at the ceiling, then we're not in the room anymore. You know, so that was really liberating for me. 